Have you ever looked up at the stars at night and wondered if there's someone out there for you? Have you been going to bed night after night, filled with hope, only to wake up disappointed? Have you been wandering out to the same old cow pastures, only to find yourself walking home lonely, discouraged, and completely unabducted? Stop leaving these things to chance. Even if you were to be abducted, how could you be sure that you'd be abducted by the alien life forms that were just right for you? We here at the Dreyfus Extraterrestrial Connections Coordination Group specialize in matching alien abduction hopefuls with aliens who are looking to abduct. There are hundreds of alien civilizations who are looking to abduct native Earth residents. Each extraterrestrial faction seeks different types of people for different reasons, and their needs are as diverse as your dreams. Signing up is simple. Call our toll-free number and one of our friendly representatives will arrange a visit with one of our highly qualified intake assessors at a Dreyfus office near you. After a brief interview and simple physical exam, our coordination specialists will get to work matching you with the alien abductors who are just right for you. Does it work? Yes. But you don't have to take my word for it. It was important to me that I be as intentional as possible on my quest for alien abduction. I mean, we've all heard the statistics, right? We've all seen the stories of people being abducted and having an absolute terrible experience. <laughs> I knew I was not going to let that be me. I had made a promise to myself that, on the night of my abduction, that I would settle for nothing less than the sentient galactic being of my dreams. <laughs> That's why I made contact with Dryfus Group. I knew that they would make my experience out of this world. I had actually already been abducted twice, um, both times a complete disaster. The first time was shortly after graduating from college. Um, I think I was just too young to know what I was looking for. Uh, the second time, I think I was still reeling, you know, from the absolute train wreck of my first abduction. And I was just so relieved to find, you know, another alien civilization that was interested in me. And I just rushed into it way too fast and ignored all the red flags. <sighs> For years after that, you know, I told anybody who would listen that um, I'm just, I was done with abductions. Uh, and I meant it. I did. Uh, but eventually I was ready again. Yeah, and this time I was going to do it right. That's why I called the Dreyfus Group. I think every little girl grows up dreaming of the day they'll be abducted by an alien civilization, don't they? You know, when I was a teenager, I snuck up onto my roof and spray painted a big red X on it, right above where my bed was. <laughs> Over the years, the spray paint faded, but my dreams sure didn't. And one day I decided I was tired of waiting. I knew I needed help, and I'll tell you what, I wasn't afraid to admit it. That's why I made the call. So what, do you just want me to talk into this thing, or...? I've dreamt about being abducted by aliens for years. And for years I'd really been putting myself out there. I'd read books, I'd went to workshops to become my most abductable self. My friends would even say things like, You're the most abductable person we know. Just hang in there, and you're going to make a team of kidnapping alien scientists very happy. But it just, it never happened for me. 
but I can't believe how quickly things went when I contacted the Dreyfus group. After just eight days after my initial exam and interview, I was abducted by a team of wonderful alien scientists. It was the perfect abduction experience. Beyond anything I dared to dream. Was that okay? Dreyfus, what are you waiting for? Give us a call now. Hello. I'm JP. I'm going to be your intake assessor today. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. First, we'll be going through some interview questions, and after that, there will be a brief uh, sort of physical exam. We will be referring you to um, a different clinic to undergo a more thorough uh, medical exam, but there are a few things that are kind of specialized that we like to do here just to get the ball rolling. Um, so if it's all right with you, I'll go ahead and start asking the questions. We'll get through those, and then we'll move on to the more uh, physical exam part. All right? Okay. So, uh, number one, what is your preferred language for verbal communication? Do you have any background in methods of communication that involve gesture, rhythm, symbols, or other non-spoken elements, such as ASL, Morse code, semaphore, syllogomero, etc.? All right. Are you allergic to any medications, and if so, which ones? Right? Um, do you have any food allergies or any other dietary restrictions or preferences? Anything else on that? No more specifications? And do you have any other allergies not covered by the previous two questions, such as environmental allergies, um, a latex allergy, allergic reaction, or irritation as a result of exposure to any specific plants, chemicals, artificial scents, or fabrics? Do you happen to know your tolerance to gamma radiation? You know what? Well, most people don't know, but also most people are. Uh, we found the tolerance on most people is pretty low, so I'm just going to go ahead and put very low, just to be on the safe side. All right, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being, I absolutely love it, and 1 being, no thank you, never, not at all, how much do you like to be physically active? 
and uh, if you do enjoy physical activity, please give me some examples. All right. Would you prefer that your inter-extraterrestrial experience involve active physical and verbal participation on your part, or would you prefer a more passive experience? And you can request a mix of both if you'd like, that's fine too. All right, I had a feeling you were going to say that. Next, there is extraordinary diversity in the appearance of different alien individuals, uh, the physical appearance, but you'll see, um, both between and within various civilizations. There can also be a great deal of variation in the alien environments you may be introduced to. Keeping all this in mind, do you have any phobias, fears, or significant aesthetic aversions that we should be aware of when matching you? All right. Anything else? Do you want me to give you a moment to think? Okay. I'm going to ask you a series of quick questions. Um, if you know the answers to these, go ahead and tell me, but for any of these next few ones, if you don't know the answer, that's fine. Uh, just say no, or I don't know, or shake your head, any of those will be fine, all right? So, do you know your life path number? Do you know your Myers-Briggs type? Okay. Do you know your Enneagram number? Do you know your sun sign? And your sun sign is the astrological sign, like the main one that most people are familiar with. I was born in early June, so I'm a Gemini. All right. Thought you might be. Do you know your moon sign? And do you know your ascendant sign? All right. So 
So alien abductions usually, though not always, involve some kind of examination and or observation. For the next few questions, please indicate either option A, option B, or say no preference. All right? So A, B, or no preference. Let's see. Uh, first one, do you prefer A, a warm and gentle examination style, or B, a more clinical and detached examination style? A, B, or no preference. Would you prefer A, a small group of alien researchers, possibly even limited to one individual, or B, a larger group of researchers, which may include many observers? All right. Do you have a preference for whether A, you are transported all the way to your alien matches home planet, home station, or home dimension, or are you okay with your experience happening at some midway point, for example, a spaceship? So I'm sorry, that was A, if you prefer to go all the way back to their home, B would be if a midway point like a space station is fine. So A, B, or no preference. like to send their abductees home with some sort of souvenir, uh, common examples of which may include signed photographs, pressed coins, or subdermally implanted tracking devices. Are you a yes or no to souvenirs? So this nearly completes this portion of the interview. Uh, however, I do have this for you. I'm going to place it right next to you. Um, there are a few questions that are really important to the interview that we've found that um, some people hesitate to answer honestly out loud or they even just don't answer honestly in as much detail as they could, either because they feel like their answers are silly or because maybe it feels um, a little too personal. But in any sense, just for everyone now, what we do is we put some extra questions right in here, and this is for you to answer privately after the session, and then you'll see there's a secure box on the way out that you can put this into. Alright, okay, so I'm going to put this right over here, and let's see, um, before I put my computer away here, do you have any additional requests or notes that you'd like me to record at this time?
So let me go ahead and clear this off my desk and we'll move right ahead. All right, well, next we're gonna do a couple of very simple procedures that you've probably had done many times before in your life. I'm gonna take this stethoscope and if it's all right with you, I'm gonna place this right against your chest, right up here. I'm gonna take a little listen to your heart and your lungs. Could you go ahead and take a deep breath for me? And out. Good, all right, in. And out. One more time, in, and out. Beautiful. All right. Now I'm going to do a very simple eye exam, nothing too exciting. I'm just going to ask you to take a look at my finger right here. Okay. So looking at this finger with both eyes, I'm going to be moving my finger to the side and down, in and out, and do your best just to follow it with your eyes, all right? So, here we go. Following it. Good. Beautiful. All right. This time, I'm going to ask you to take a look straight ahead right here at my nose. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking two fingers and I'm going to be moving them away from each other. And what I would like you to do is just keep staring straight, straight ahead at my nose right here. And once my fingers, both of them, leave your peripheral vision, just let me know that you can't see them anymore, okay? You can just nod or say now. It's up to you, okay? So looking right here. You ready? So let me know when they disappear. Again, looking straight ahead, let me know. Okay. Good. Again. All right. Once again, following my finger. Yeah. You're doing an amazing job. Okay. Beautiful. Great. Alright, so for this next part, I just need to put on my gloves real quick. So what I'm going to be doing is taking a few swabs as uh, samples for us to examine. The first one will be the inside of your cheek, so for that part I'll just need you to open your mouth and I'll be placing one of those soft swabs inside your mouth and I'll sweep it around your inner cheek just a little bit. After that, I'm going to be taking two more swabs, um, one from your face and one from the back of your neck, and those will both be um, like a microbiome swab. We do like to examine the microbiome of your skin for... I don't need to give you the whole explanation. Um, but then after we do the swabs, we'll go ahead and move on to the facial topography scan. Okay. So, just a moment. I'll add glove up here.
once again, this first swab is for the inside of your cheek. So if you could just open up your mouth, you can get right in there. And there we go. Just gently sweeping it around. Just another moment. Thank you for being patient. So for this one, I'm going to be getting a couple swabs from just the outside of your face, on this side and on this side. So if I may, I'm just going to there we go. Now on this side. There we go. Alright. For this one, I'm going to be reaching around the back of your neck. I'm going to get kind of close for a second. Hold on. So I'm going to be reaching right around the back of your neck and swabbing two spots back there, okay? First, the side. Does that tickle a little? the next thing. What I have here is a comprehensive list of different drugs and medications as well as topical treatments that may cause photosensitivity. So anything that you take on a regular basis or put on your skin that may cause increased sensitivity to UV light. Um, if you could just, instead of me reading it all off, if I could just hand it to you, you can take a little look at it. Does any of that look familiar to you? Just scan it real quick. Anything on there? Okay. Alright, well, I will adjust our settings accordingly. So, you've probably noticed those big light panels on either side of you. What we are going to be doing with these... Um, basically, there are a lot of alien civilizations, you'd be surprised how many, who have not a single type of sensory input that is similar to ours. Right? Like we uh, have sight, uh, well, most of us have sight, uh, hearing, taste, touch, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, plenty of other alien civilizations take in and process information from the external world. Completely different. It's fascinating. But anyway, uh, for that reason, it's not super efficient for us to include just a photograph or a video view in your file. So that's why we do this facial topography. Each of those panels will send out these horizontal beams of colored light one at a time. So as they illuminate, they will illuminate different areas on your face, starting from the 
that. Keep me starting near your ear and then move forward. What I do is I see which part of your face is lit up with each stage. I take some notes and um, that allows us to create something that translates a little bit better to all of the abductors that we work with just to make sure that everyone can get a good sense of your appearance if that happens to be important to the subject of whatever they'd be picking you up and researching you for. All right, so it is really quite simple. Um, I'm going to begin just by adjusting your face a little bit, if that's all right. And then you just sit there as still as you can while the lights progress, and I take notes. It shouldn't feel uncomfortable. It won't even seem that bright. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen is once we start getting to the lights that are at or in front of your eye area, uh, you might see sort of like a tint change in the room at that time. Okay? But yeah, it's pretty subtle. So, is it okay if I put my hands on your face? I'm just going to do a couple subtle... Okay. We can just make sure that you, you are really nearly close to perfect here. I just want to make absolutely sure. Okay, let me... I think we are just about ready to get started. Let me take a few quick notes about the settings here. To help us contextualize the measurements later on. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is uh, sound activated, so if you hear me counting down, that's what I'm doing. We are going to move ahead and just sit there as still as you can and try to relax, okay? All right. So, 10. back actually just a little bit. Perfect. who have no sight, no hearing, they don't even have something that's entirely comparable to our sense of touch. Everything's different. Think about that a lot. Mm-hmm. be missing even just one of those senses, um, and a lot of other people will act like it's some kind of big tragedy or something, but then there are creatures on other planets who 
not a single one of them have sight or hearing and they they don't miss it they are living normal healthy happy lives it uh reminds me of what's it called have you heard of the social model of disability as opposed to the medical model of disability it's pretty cool stuff basically holds, if I'm understanding it correctly, that a person is only disabled to the extent that they are disabled by their environment. It's just a different way of framing the whole thing. I mean, if, if we took you or any other person on Earth and just dropped them the way they are in a lot of these planets we deal with those people would be considered profoundly disabled in that environment because the uh you know even though over here they might not think of themselves as disabled they have lived their entire lives in an environment what is that in an 14 and a half in an environment that um, grew and was developed around what they can and can't do. So. Take anyone from here, drop them in a lot of those other planets, drop them somewhere where the dominant culture was not built around their abilities and limitations. Profoundly disabled. Yeah, I think it's interesting to look at it that way as more of an environmental thing. Alright, so we are going to just go ahead and nine. Okay. Four. Sorry I'm so chatty, I'm getting excited for I'm going away sometime next week. Uh, one of the perks of the job is that we get a complimentary yearly abduction. Mm hmm yeah. I'm really well-traveled at this point. I know. I'm really blessed. Um, you know, they've all been really positive experiences, but if I had to choose, I'd say that my favorite abduction was the time that I spent some time in a zoo on Trophamador. Oops, uh, sorry, one of the lights stopped working. Let me get that unstuck. Beautiful. All right, and eight. Seven. Okay. You have a really good face for this. Six.
four. Two. Can you close your eyes, please? Okay, you can open them again if you like. Close one more time. Close your eyes one more time, please. And open. One. completes this portion of the exam. You're looking pretty relaxed right now. I'm gonna go ahead and see myself out. Um, you take as much time you'd like here to uh, just relax or uh, finish that questionnaire, whatever you'd like, and I hope I get to see you the next time you come in. Alright, bye.